Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Star Wars After Hours. I'm Seven Spolino. I am Josh Combs. We have a ton to cover today. We're recording on the heels of Star Wars Celebration Orlando. Yeah, there's so much information to go over that we're not going to be able to go over all of it today. We're going to do kind of like an overview, and then within the next few weeks, we can dive deep into each kind of like each little pocket of information yeah this is like a couple podcasts worth of information yeah but um oh man where do you even where do we even start well i know where we're gonna start actually we're gonna start with the last jedi trailer okay let's start that right now let's we're gonna get right into it it's gonna be a packed episode Pretty amazing. Powerful. What was your initial impression? <clears throat> uh, well, of course, everyone, I think the first thing that we thought of or thought about was that last quote. Yeah. By Luke. What does it mean? It's time for the Jedi to end. That's like the... Yeah, I was like, oh, he's it's he's about to be like, yeah, it's time for the Jedi to return. Yeah, exactly. That's like the Jedi to rise or something yeah. cool like that. Yeah, so, and Luke, yeah. Luke, <laughs> why Luke? Why is it time for the Jedi to end? I mean, I'm sure that it has something to do with what he finds out about the Jedi in the first Jedi Temple or whatever. Um, maybe that the Jedi are not what they seem. Hmm. I mean, we'll, we'll get more into that when we just like go in depth with this trailer. Right. What was your just initial reaction just to the trailer though? Like, did you love it? Did I you... loved it so much. Like that was, that was exactly what I wanted Yeah. and needed. And, um, 
I'm just excited for D23 because I think that's where they're going to show the dark side trailer. That's what I wanted. I, I was I was really hoping to see. I wasn't. I mean, it was it was good. I wasn't mm-hmm. like blown away. Like uh, there was one trailer for The Force Awakens, the one with that had Han and Chewie at the end, mm-hmm. where I was just like blown away by that one. Because that last like Chewie, we're home. Yeah, I mean that one. Yeah. It kind of just like pulls at you. Like you can't even do that. Well, yeah, I guess you... this one did that for time for the Jedi to end. Yeah. It's like, it, and then it it leaves it open, like that, like that's. We have so many questions now. Yeah, once again, that one word. We have way more questions than we have answers. Really, about this entire uh, uh, sequel trilogy, we still don't know very much about what's going on. Yeah, um, especially that new planet that they're on. Um, Great. Yeah, crate. So it's some sort of like mineral planet. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, seeing that before knowing anything about it, I was like, "What is going on with these like ships or speeders or whatever they are?" Yeah. And it's like, um, I didn't know. Like, are they like shitty ships or something? Like, where they like jump off and hit the ground? <laughs> like, is that is it supposed to do that? Like, are they supposed to drag the the dirt up? Mm, they're probably made it looks like they have kind of like a fin on the bottom Mm -hmm. that kind of helps direct them like where they're going almost like a some type of sail like Mm, a high tech rudder yeah um, a rudder that's the word i'm looking for like it looks like they have a rudder on the bottom Mm, i didn't i don't know how those are gonna fare in a battle with um fohas but (laughs) dude i can imagine not well but the weird thing is that those looked like AT-ATs. Yeah, they did. They I, did. It didn't look like a gorilla walker. So I didn't see them posture like they're like they're being described. Yeah, so it feels like they do have multiple sizes of walkers that they're going to be using. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking with um, with uh, the Star Wars expansion at Disneyland. If they put in those AT-ATs, and it's like. Are they going to be in original trilogy or, um, or the sequel trilogy or right. whatever? But um, so I guess now they have both the originally sized, original sized ATATs as well as these new Gorilla Walkers, and I mean we haven't seen those. We probably won't see them until the actual thing like until the actual movie until the movie yeah and then um there was a little bit of uh some talk about star tours and that's including the new planet um star tours at disneyland and uh Disney's hollywood studio crate, is what they're saying they're gonna oh. add crate to it that's cool so I'm sure that you're going to be riding side by side with those little rudder speeder things. Yeah, that'd be cool. That uh, they look speeders. uh they look bumpy and um pod racy. Yeah, pod racy, so I'm sure they can make that really fun. Yeah. But um yeah, it was interesting. Uh like tonally it was a pretty dark trailer. Um mm-hmm. just the way it was shot, um especially for being kind of like the light side trailer. Yeah. With all those characters that are all, like, the hero characters, but it's really dark on the hero's end. Yeah. So I remember, or I wonder if the, you know, the the dark side end is going to be a little bit more revealing to a uh, emotional type thing. Because that's going to be a trailer where it shows the actual kind of, like, story to it. Right. Because we saw that... Uh, that interview that Mark Hamill and Daisy Ridley did with um with ABC, I think it was on Good Morning America. And they're kind of addressing some questions about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Even even like um. Not emotionally, but the way it was shot, like the colors, it was it was a dark trailer. Yeah. Um. Just the you know the shots they use from it. Um. The island looks 
looks interesting. There's some interesting stuff going on there. It's definitely Dagobah-esque with that type of... Gloomy looking mm -hmm. almost, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to do a super in-depth breakdown with Dale, I think, next week. But um, what are your big questions after this trailer? Um, I mean, the biggest question that everyone is having is, why does Luke want the Jedi to end? And what is he? And... Um, you know, not what is he, but like, what is he as far as like faction goes? We know he's on the resistance, but is he even on the resistance anymore? Has he just been like, I don't want anything to do with this battle whatsoever, so I'm just gonna leave? Or did he really go to find like the I don't know the meaning meaning of the Jedi and try to bring it back, but realizes that the Jedi aren't what it, they seem. So he's going on either on his own, starting something else or going to something even more ancient. Cause he says there's so much more, right? Mm -hmm. There's so much more than that or so much more. Yeah. There's so much more, I think. Yeah. So, cause it's not the, not just the light side in the dark. And I wonder if that's going to play into the Bendu yeah, thing. I was gonna say I'm already like drawing parallels to mm -hmm. the Bendu and Luke at this point. Like the Bendu way out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Where's Luke? Way out in the middle of nowhere. He wanted to you know, the Bendu wanted to kind of separate himself from everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. He's the one in the middle. And now Luke is, you know, isolated himself. Yeah, and he's kind of in the middle now, or or we think or he could be on the dark side and he kind of addresses that in that that interview also so i think we should take a listen to that okay real quick i've got to ask you mark at, at the very end right. it looks like you but is it you that's saying, I only know one truth, it's time for the Jedi to end? Is that your voice? It is my voice. It is? It is. So what has happened to you Well, to reach this point? There's a difference between a teaser and a trailer. A teaser is supposed to show you dynamic images that heighten your awareness and make you want to see the trailer, but avoid all story points, if at all possible. So I think that's the only story point that's in the teaser, which is Luke saying it's time for the Jedi to end. And uh, you know, other than that, I can't really describe more. But it's it's, it's it was a shocking to me uh, to read what Ryan had written, as I'm sure it will be for the audience. Do you make a turn to the dark side? Is that uh, possible? It's possible. Anything's possible. I, you know what happened? I read one theory and I said to Ryan, I said, this is the one I want to do. <laughs> and it was... Did you have a say in it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that end, like that woman, I could strangle her. I'm sorry, but like she cut off when he was going to say the theory that he wanted it to be. And we could have been able to take out, like, you know, we could have... Um, eliminated some ideas so she cut him off she cut him off just straight up like oh did you have any say in that oh my it's God. like yeah like <laughs> you think he was gonna get, go into that theory a little bit yeah watch this it. yeah we'll replay it here and it was did you have a say in it no okay <laughs> oh yeah just like that we could have scratched one off yeah, we could have scratched probably a few things off. Like, because if he would have gone through the theory, we would have been able to find that theory and even read more in depth than what they would play in that stupid, like, minute and 14 second clip. And she, and she doesn't go back to it? No. Nope. That's it. It's like, oh, do you have a say in that? No, I don't have a say. All right. Later. Oh man! So we could have eliminated like so many possibilities. It hurt so bad. That was the like the biggest thing. After that, I was like, "What? No, <laughs> no!" 
<laughs> you took this from us. This information we could have taken, but we had a lot of good, um, not information, but kind of uh, speculation, uh, some type of some type of fodder for our speculations. Whereas he says anything can happen. So, and Luke could turn to the dark side. He could, yeah. And he said he was surprised by what um, Ryan Johnson had put in there. So he himself was surprised. God, there's so many possibilities. Yeah. We still don't really know what happened at his academy. No, not at all. And we, we don't really know what you know kylo's whole deal is yeah it's like what actually happened between luke and kylo ren did they fight i want to see a flashback of them fighting before and like maybe them training and luke's too hard on him or something like that like because he's related to him and he's really powerful so maybe he's kind of just like too tough on him and he's yeah going a different way and then now we're gonna see how he's gonna train ray if he even trains her because we don't even know if he just turns her down right away like we don't know anything because i mean he could turn her down and be like okay like you can just like do things around here like mr miyagi like <laughs> i'm not gonna teach you but you can clean my shit and then like after until like the end of the movie then she's like swinging around a lightsaber and making yeah i was gonna say it it looks like they're she's training oh she's definitely training too but i don't know if it's gonna happen right when they get there yeah that's the other thing we don't really know like it's hard to piece things together because we don't know at what point in the movie all of the shots take place in yeah um or if they take place in the movie at all (laughs) my god yeah (laughs) I, i don't i don't really get that but you know whatever because that dialogue is is probably not probably from that not cave the, scene. Yeah. Um, there's a shot of Captain Phasma, and it's a little hard to tell what's behind her. It might just be standard stormtroopers, or it might be... I don't know why Phasma would be with the Knights of Ren. Yeah, and there was um, a... There's definitely some, some fire involved. Yeah, so it's it's hard to tell where that's from, because we get a shot of Luke and R2 and it looks like that's maybe from a force back to his Academy. Yeah. And then we see Phasma, um, with some fire and stuff, fire and exploded things. So that might be the past. Or do you think that maybe during the force vision, that was a vision of the future of what's going to happen when she's on Octu, when Kylo Ren and Captain Phasma, like get there i don't know it's a little hard for me to place phasma at um at like the burning of luke's academy yeah because that doesn't make sense to me i mean from everything we know i mean it would be interesting to see her in a lower rank in a different costume that'd be kind of cool yeah but but from everything we know um when the academy burned it was just kind of kylo and the knights that's all we saw we didn't see phasma you know in the first mm-hmm. force back well because that's before the you know before the first order had their their rise to power really yeah so it doesn't that's what i'm saying though is mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense to place phasma at the burning of luke's academy so then that also kind of tells us that it's going to be it's got to be somewhere the else future, yeah. or it's going to be somewhere else or whatever so it might be on Octu where they come there and you know because there is a a comic coming out soon that um it's all about Phasma and it's going to show like how she got out of the thing the trash compactor oh. like stuff like that it's going to fill in those gaps between the two um the two movies i'm not sure when it's coming out i will post it on here once i see when it's coming out yeah what is her role going to be I mean, there's some, there's some, yeah, there's some stuff that needs explain in here. Well, I think that's when we, uh, what we need to talk to Dale about. Dale about, yeah, yeah, because that is gonna be interesting. How does she just get welcomed back with open arms? You know, and 
did she? Because you don't know who is she fighting at that point. I mean, you guess like, oh, it's stormtroopers and whatever. But what if, what if Kylo Ren rebels or something and she's actually going against Kylo or something or the other way around where she turns some stormtroopers, brings her, brings them with her into the resistance or whatever. Yeah, that's true. We don't know anything. Yeah. We, we're going to come up with theories and then talk about them. What if she turns some stormtroopers and they join the resistance and they still just wore their stormtrooper armor? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going to need some sort of armor in like battle if it just happened. Like if they yeah. just revolted against it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I'm just having fun <laughs> picturing that. That'd be pretty funny. They go into battle and the, the first order troopers are like, dude, what like going on here well that's like rex he's been wearing his freaking clone armor for how many years <laughs> yeah 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 it's kind of kind of funny but uh now let's get to the actual last jedi panel there is a ton in this um so we're just gonna talk about a few things uh i know that they introduced a new character the one played by Kelly Marie Tran, and her name is Rosie. Rose. Or Rose. Not Rosie. Not Rose. Rosie. Yes. Um, and she is a maintenance worker. Ooh, a maintenance worker and a janitor. Sounds like a... Love at first floor cleaned. I was actually going to say Ghostbusters 2, but... Um, oh. Or well. not Ghostbusters 2, but the new Ghostbusters. I wonder if they're going to, like, have girl some... Girlbusters. <laughs> yeah, Girlbusters, is that what it... <laughs> yeah, I think that's the title, right? Girlbusters, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's what it is. I've... I always forget the titles for all these movies, so... Girlbusters. <laughs> girl I remember busters. that. All right. Ladybusters. <laughs> doesn't sound right it sounds like you're busting ladies not ladies that are or is it busting like busting ghosts ladies that are busting ghosts lady busters that none of this sounds all right at yeah. all <laughs> anyways it's kind of like what's happening right now no it's the 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 lady that works in the train i forgot what her name is what the actress's name or the character's name but she kind of gets pulled into the whole thing because she works at the train station and she's just like a regular person that's just coming in here from just a stupid little thing like, oh, she sees a ghost. A ghost? Yeah, she sees a ghost. Does she lady bust it? <laughs> no, she screams and runs away. And then... Right into the arms of the First Order <laughs> janitor. See, so that's going to be... I think it's going to be similar to that where she's just like in some sort of weird predicament where they like Bump they need her for some like some stupid thing unlock this door okay and then one, she gets Marie shot Tran. or something like that and then like they can't get through the door so it's like okay i'll just hang out with you for the rest of the movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's how star wars is man. yeah it's like hey unlock this door for us <laughs> it's like i'm just gonna hang out with you guys yeah I, yeah I'm on the crew now. <laughs> they just invite anyone. They don't even do background checks. They don't. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, look at Finn. They didn't know that for a while. He could have just not said anything. Yeah, dude. Well, instead of the, the you know, until the part where it's like, traitor. <laughs> traitor. Then they, they kind of know. It's like, oh, wait. He's a traitor for something. <laughs> he traded. He traded something, bro. And okay, so also Princess Leia, General Leia, is not going to be in Episode Nine, contrary to what her brother said. Kathleen Kennedy said that he was confused, and uh, that she's not going to take place in it. So that means that bye she's bye, gonna die. Beautiful. <laughs> Don't bother to write. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, that's rough, man. That's yeah. really rough. I have a headache for them just figuring out all those rewrites. Like, that's... That's bad. 
Yeah, because I wonder where she was going to be left off in this and what, like, what she was going to do in 9. Unless they lied to us the whole time and, like, had to make up a story of why she couldn't be in 9, even though, it, you know. I mean, it's the same thing. Like, if she died, is it going to be insensitive or should they just go through with it and tell the story how it should have been, you know? Yeah, that's the, I mean. I think they... maybe that's it, you know. They kind of like went back and forth with it and did some rewrites, and they're like, ah, we'll just throw it all in eight, do just like, you know, a few just little re do do's and just get it over with. Ugh. It sucks. This whole situation sucks. Like, even with um, just watching Star Wars is kind of hard now, you know? Yeah. Like, just seeing Carrie Fisher, and it's just like, man, she's gone. And it's like, uh, at the end of rogue one i was watching rogue one with my niece and at the end she got really excited when she saw princess leia and i mean she's young so she doesn't know the difference you know she doesn't know cgi anything whatever right so it was princess leia to her and it's like crazy how it was princess leia to me too man that cgi yeah. was awesome no i know but I, but it's um it's really cool that I mean, I know a lot of people are complaining about people being brought back with CGI, but it's cool that that character can live on forever, you know, whether or not the actor is with us anymore. And I mean, it feels different for us, and it will, because like we grew up having like Carrie Fisher doing interviews and watching all that stuff, and it's just a little different, but... You know, she, my niece is not going to look at it from that perspective. She sees it as like, oh, Princess Leia, I love her from the last one. Right. I'm really excited that I saw her. But it's like, to us, it's like... Oh, man. Yeah, and it was just, it's such a weird thing how it was like, it's like, I mean, I'm not saying it was planned, but it's almost like it was planned. Like, that that was just like a, a love letter written to Carrie Fisher was was rogue one you know yeah yeah Ugh, i think she just barely got to see it before she passed away too yeah mm. pretty sad i don't think she saw the finished the entire finished film i think she saw um she saw the kathleen kennedy came to her house with a laptop that had the scenes I think she her. saw it actually. I Did remember, she see it? yeah, I remember okay. one of her crazy emoji tweets. She saw it in like, uh, I think it was like Berlin or something, like some movie theater in Berlin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I had heard about the, um, maybe it was the first time she saw it. She yeah. She was really excited because she didn't even know that it wasn't. She thought it was reused footage like they did with Red Leader and Gold Leader. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, she is not going to be in episode nine. So that means that her story is ending in episode eight. Oh, it's just brutal. Yeah. Let me take this jacket off. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. So, um, there's a lot of stuff that we got from the last Jedi panel, but a lot of it was cryptic. You know, I mean, they have to be like that. And I think that we are going to get a lot of information from D23, even on The Last Jedi. And we're going to get um, the title for the Han Solo Solo film. Han Solo Solo film. Yes. Han Solo Star Wars story. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> why, would, why would it be something else? I don't know. Can they already started with the Star Wars story thing. It'd just get confusing if they didn't do that. Yeah. Nam say? Yeah, but it didn't even say that on the actual movie. It was only billed as that, like, like when, like, on the internet. Because on Rogue One, it doesn't say that on the title. It just, yeah, it says, just Rogue says Rogue One. One. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, they might, they probably thought, like, oh, that was kind of a stupid idea. Let's just change it. But they also changed that it's not going to be episode, it's not going to be episode 8. It's just going to be The Last Jedi. 
So they're ending calling them eight, nine, whatever. So colloquially, we call them eight and nine. But the actual names that they're going to build them as is the actual name, like The Last Jedi. Hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting because it's kind of like how they originally did it where it wasn't like, you know, episode four, or episode five, episode right. six until they like did the prequels and really like put that together and changed the the crawl. The last Jedi. Yeah. What did you think of the poster? The poster was sick and it definitely has some meaning behind it. And I think so, too. Yeah. I think it's like it's hard because it's like is is Kylo going to go back and be on Luke's side because he's not a Jedi and then Kylo has something against Snoke or something like that there's so much that can happen we'll throw together theories and go over it but my first impression was that it is beautifully done I being you know an artist of artistic mind like the color schemes were perfect i love how it brought back like the imagery of the original poster with yeah exactly like with the the lightsaber i actually used to have that in my room that the old poster with that same pose yeah yeah the original star wars poster so do you think it was a conscious decision to keep um both luke and kylo red yeah. I think so too. I think so. I also think that we might be looking too much into a poster. I don't think so. Yeah. Because I've I honestly Star Wars is all about subtlety and Yeah, know. and everything nothing is done on accident with Star Wars. Especially with Ryan Johnson, I feel yeah. like. Their whole everyone, their art department, their everyone there is always in canon they have to be they have to go back and forth with pablo hidalgo and a bunch of other people in lucasfilm and it's easy because they can just go down you know to a few offices down and be like hey like does this roll with like this timeline or whatever is this necessary can we add this color to mean this you know and then they probably you know there's so many things that they could do and that they do on just visuals of a, a still photo to make sure that they're not giving away too much so it's like little things like that but i think there is meaning behind all of the artwork and the posters and everything yeah and just the lighting choices the color choices everything Font yeah choices yeah it's it's a very interesting poster it's striking mm -hmm. but it's and very interesting i think even the font of the last jedi is a little bit darker like not the color but um the feeling it's more um like it's a little bit different where edgy. it is more edgy whereas it's like it's kind of more like blocked like more uniform so it's like you really feel first order with that you know what i mean right whereas like with uh the force awakens it's kind of like it doesn't have like it's whimsical. Not, it's just like a little bit. It has just enough where it's not perfect sizes and stuff. It's got little serifs on it, um, you know, and it, it it just looks different. And I'm wondering what the next one's gonna be, and if it's gonna go in a different theme each time based on something, or if I'm just looking way too far into typography, because <laughs> that's that's a little far. Yeah, I think that's a little bit far. No, but still. I think we're in, a, in for a wild ride here. But yeah, let's let's move on because we're gonna do the we're gonna have the superstar crew here next week with uh, Dale and yeah, we're gonna dig a six foot hole for this trailer. Like we're gonna bury it. We're like we're gonna go deep. That's what I was trying to say. Like trying to. So we're gonna go deep, but then we're gonna kill it and bury it. Is that why? Yeah, there will be there will be nothing left to talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then next time we have a trailer, maybe we'll uh, dig that one up, put it in the um, pet cemetery. We'll come back. We'll kind of remember it. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, something like that. Whatever. All right. So um, what do you want to talk about next? Um, 
Well, if you haven't already, you really should listen to Thrawn by Timothy Zahn. Just came out April 11th. Thrawn by Timothy Zahn. Yes. You can go to audibletrial.com slash Star Wars After Hours. You can get a free trial, and if you don't like it, you can cancel, but they have a ton of Star Wars books there. Yes. over It's like over 80 now. Yeah. These are Star Wars audiobooks that you can listen with cool people that have nice voices that are easy to listen to, and... Um, some of them have like music in the background. Yeah. It like really builds it up. And some of them have sound effects. The Thrawn one has sound effects. Yeah. If you haven't heard our last episode, we play a clip from it in the last one. There's there's a part you can hear um, birds in the background. And... Yeah. So it is really like more of a radio drama type thing than just a regular audiobook. So it's totally worth it. And with the trial, you get that audiobook for free. So that means that if you cancel within that 30 days, you pay nothing Zilch. for a free audiobook. And at the same time, your participation helps us out as a podcast. It does. And it helps us many. Yeah, it definitely helps it us. It helps us bigly. It helps us real big, real bigly. <laughs> And then uh, the other thing that helps us really bigly is if you go to our website and go hit the banner that says mycomicshop.com and uh, sign up on mycomicshop.com and you can buy, sell uh, comic books, uh, collectibles. You can find like signed signed pictures like like Harrison Ford or whatever. Not just Star Wars, but there's all comics. Spoderman? Yes. Tim Mason Spoderman? Yes. All of it. Mm. Every bit of every bit of every character of everything from the beginning of comic books themselves. You can find things from like the fifties. It's gonna be expensive, but it's worth it. And ugly and poorly drawn. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's history. It's history. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Why, I don't why does care. Superman's face look like an eraser? <laughs> Action Comics number one. Like, why were they so bad at drawing? I don't know. It's like let's they not did bash it. old comic books. Actually, I love all those people, and thank you for starting a great medium to uh, for everyone to make better. But why was that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because it was like usually like one or two people that did the entire thing. Yeah, but like and they had to put out uh, a, you know a, a a book every week usually. Oh, okay. Well, so that's how they stayed um, stayed, stayed relevant. Stayed sucking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it worked. So, and if you're a collector, you know what? Pay a shitload of money for that shitty comic book. Yeah, and actually, you can find really good um, really good deals because you can actually do like bidding. Like there's auctions and stuff. It's kind of like it's like eBay mixed with Amazon, but comics and collectibles. And uh, you can buy like all the different cover variants and um, you know things that are rare that are sold out and even pre-order the new stuff before it comes out and get it straight to your door. Yeah, so, new and old, they have everything. Everything, you know, from like the original Star Wars comics to Darth Vader and Maul. Yeah, get all the Dark Horse stuff and yeah, uh, get the – start ordering the Darth Maul series. Yeah, and then also the uh, – was it? Marvel had a series, I think it was in the 80s, that had a little um, Star Wars mashup, which is really ridiculous. Did it really? Yep. I, I'm going to look it up and I'll, I'll um, post a link on the thing and I'll put a picture up, but I need to That's funny. show you that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to show everyone that. But yeah, you could probably find that on mycomicshop.com. So go to our website, starwarsafterhours.com. 
click on the banner for mycomicshop.com and uh, get some comics, and that helps us out. What else do we got? Um, last thing here, we are giving away a hashtag rare ATST Black Series 3.75 scale figurine. That doesn't mean that it's, uh, for people wondering this, that doesn't mean that it is three inches tall. No. That means that it's, a person yeah, it's to is the that scale. size. It's to the scale of a person that height. If you were three and a half, three and three quarters inches tall, then an ATST would be, you know, whatever size this figure is. It's big. <laughs> so it's, it's maybe like a, a over a foot tall <laughs> around there. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a pretty hefty piece of equipment that uh, you can keep in your in your collection for a very long time that you can pass on to your children and it's rare dude it's a walmart exclusive yeah you can't find them like anywhere you can find them in like a few walmarts you can get them on ebay but like on ebay new ones are going for like like 80 bucks or something 80, 90 bucks yeah. yeah and then like they'll have some that are, some that are like out of box still selling for like 30 or 40 dollars yep all you have to do to have a chance to win an ATST of yours <laughs> is donate a dollar to our Indiegogo account. Um, one dollar is one entry. The winner will be chosen with a random number generator. And um, yeah, and our last winner for the uh, Princess Leia figure was Vincent Valenzuela. Thank so, you for your support, Mr. Valenzuela. Definitely. So our next winner, we will talk about you on the podcast. And we'll also give you a cool ass ATST. Yes. Yes, we will. All right. So now we need to talk about what we saw about Star Wars Land and what we heard. And this was such a huge dump of information. I mean, not a dump in a bad way, but like they just like dumped a large so much quantity. on it. Yes, exactly. It's just so much information that it's hard to process. Infowars. Infowars.com. Um, hashtag Infowars.com. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dot worked with hashtags, believe me. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, Bigly. <it> <laughs> So I think that we're just going to listen to this or uh, if you're on the podcast or if you're listening, you're going to listen to this. But if you're watching on YouTube, you are going to watch this. It is what they played during the panel. It's called Disney Parks Imagineers and Lucasfilm Collaborate on Star Wars Themed Lands. It's on the Disney Parks YouTube <laughs> There are a couple of those moments growing up that you just always remember. And for me, one of those was going to see Star Wars in the theaters for the very first time. It took me on a journey to a world that felt so different and so unique from anything I had seen before. The very first kind of movies that I and a lot of the people in my generation were making in our heads as kids was in that world of Star Wars. We were using X-Wings and we were using action figures. That was the way that I was making movies in my head when I was a kid. Wouldn't it be great just to walk into the cantina or one of these experiences or to sit on the Millennium Falcon? Wouldn't that be great? And now this generation of kids is going to get to have it. One of the things I'm most excited about is inviting our guests into that Star Wars universe. Being able to see it in person and to touch it and to smell it and taste it and kind of live that amazing Star Wars experience for themselves. It's all the things that you've always wanted to do watching the movie that you've, you've never had a chance to do. Having this attraction will allow guests to really immerse themselves and feel as if they are really truly visiting Star Wars. Our goal as we set out on this journey was to create a place that was so authentic authentic, so real, that when our guests step inside, they're there. They're in the movie. And to do this, we had to partner with Lucasfilm, partner with the team that's bringing these films to life. And together, Walt Disney Imagineering and Lucasfilm are crafting a place that is just going to amaze our guests, a place that they've just never seen before. That we care a lot about making sure 
that the experience that people have in the parks feels like an immersion into the story of Star Wars and feels like an immersion into the place that we all recognize as Star Wars, even down to every little detail. One of the areas that we're paying particular close attention to is the story. We're creating a place that is an extension of the Star Wars universe, not a recreation of an experience that you might have seen on screen, but something totally brand new. There will be things in there that will feel very familiar, things in there that they've always wanted to see. But yet on top of that, we're also designing and creating new experiences so that it will really enhance what the Star Wars universe is. You walk in there and everything from just being in the environment to having random characters that you actually interact with, everything about it is just about total immersion. So it's very early in our development and the teams are working hard. We're not quite ready to announce all the details yet of the whole project, but when we do, I'm hopeful that you'll feel as excited about what this team is working on as I am. When Bob Iger first mentioned that Parks and Resorts were working on a Star Wars, um, idea or a concept. He used the word ambitious. This project is the most ambitious project I've ever seen in the history of Walt Disney Imagineering. That it is on a scale that is unprecedented. I don't think that anyone can imagine um, the level of love and, and, and the level of thoughtfulness that has gone into this. And I think people are going to be so amazed. It's going to feel so real. I think it's going to be incredible. Yeah, wow. So, what do you think about, first of all, actually, you know what? What are your first reactions? I've seen this, I've watched it a few times, but what do you, how, how do you feel right now? Um, the way they talk about it makes me excited about it because it sounds like they know what, um, people want, um, you know, man childs like myself <laughs> want to go yep. to this, go Me to too. this land and, um, and just live there. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. And just experience, you know, the immersion of star Wars. Yeah. And the, um, for podcast listeners, the people who are talking are all part of, um, both Lucasfilm and Disney Imagineering. Um, I'll go back and like cite the names because um, I'm bad at that stuff during the show. <laughs> Anyways, it is like the um, the uh, the Lucasfilm creative director. You had um, Ryan Johnson and Scott Trowbridge, of course, who's heading up the entire project, and. Um, then you have uh, Asa something. I forgot what his last name is. But um, he is another part of uh, Imagineering and Lucasfilm. They kind of work together. Okay. And um, we also saw Dave Filoni on that, which is very interesting. While they were in, in a, you know, cut to a, a sculpt of Hondo. Isn't that crazy? Mm, yeah. And it was right when they were talking about seeing um, seeing characters that you've known before and also seeing, like, new character. Um, there's, there's just so much there. I'm so excited. What were you – in the video, what are you most excited about? Oh, wow. Um, well, we, we didn't get – too much of you know the finished lands or anything but they're sculpting some creature heads i think they're sculpting and i think they're called ethorians yeah the ethorians ethorians yeah if people don't know the name it's uh the one that has uh it looks little, like a like, slug almost yeah it's it got has... like a really like long like head like it goes wavy neck with two eyes and then the it's got two mouths so they're on either side of its uh of its face which is weird. And, yeah. And uh yeah. Yeah, but the, yeah, you'll see so one in the cantina in uh in Star Wars. They were sculpting a, a bunch of creatures. It looks like they were building um some models, maybe some scale models. Mhm. Mm um 
the plot of land is huge. 14 acres. Yeah. And that is bigger than any land in, I believe, any park other than, I think, Epcot because Epcot's like like two lands. But if any, like, they call them like Magic Kingdom parks, like the ones with the castles, it's going to be like the largest land development. Honestly, it sounds like you're going to be able to just spend the entire day there. Yeah. So that begs the question. Um, I just did that. Um, I did a podcast uh, with Josh Taylor about the ticket prices at um, at Disneyland, how they would be like restructuring them. And uh, so, you know, that is also a question whether or not we're going to have a added ticket where you have to say so you have to pay 20 or $40 more to be able to get into the Star Wars areas. So that's a possibility, or they'll just raise the price. So it'll be like $150 just for Disneyland for one day rather than like 100 But it's getting up there anyways. I think it's like 120 something for like peak days, like where it's like the most busy on those days. You have to pay extra. Huh. Yeah. And um, I mean, a lot of theme parks do this. And actually, Disneyland was one of like the last parks to do this because they just started doing the like the peak pricing and stuff. Like, I think it was like last year or the year before. But yeah, if it's such a huge experience, that's worth a lot of money. And yeah. I'm wondering how much people will pay and how much more they will pay if, first of all, it's. A separate experience or if it's just raised to a ridiculous amount and how are people going to feel if they don't like star wars and they're going to disneyland and they're like why do we have to pay this extra like 80 dollars you know because they added a second park to the back of one park you know what i mean yeah so it's going to be really weird we'll see what happens in 2019 but from what we've heard it's going to be so cool that i don't know anyone who won't enjoy it even if you don't like star wars i think that this is gonna be like so immersive and so built for like multiple audiences sounds like something that could get you into star wars exactly even if you didn't have an interest in it yeah because it's a whole new story you go to this whole new planet whoa what is all this about yeah because we're all learning about the same story at the same time really it's because we don't know who's going to be there they say some familiar characters we have new characters. We have new droids coming in. We have droids that are going to be going around. I mean, there's a whole uh, Star Wars Land panel, like the whole Disney Parks panel that went on. So there's a lot of info from that. But just from that video that they played, like in the middle of the panel, there's so much, like, um, kind of information as far as who's working on it and how cohesive it is. Right. With um, Disney Imagineering and Lucasfilm. And I'm really stoked on that, that it's going to be in-universe. It's going to be canon. It's going to be a actual plotted star or a plotted planet in a star system on the galactic map, according to Pablo Hidalgo. Oh, wow. And it is it is not a new planet. It is a very old planet. And it is pre, um, uh, pre hyperspace. So it's it's basically a um, it's kind of like a rest stop that you would have to jump between planets to get refueled and stuff before they had they could go light speed before they had hyperdrives. So it's an old watering hole. Yep. And now that they have hyperdrives, no one cares about that place. So all the people there were just left there with what they have. <laughs> so that's why it kind of has that feel to it. It kind of has a little Jakku feel to it where they kind of have to deal with what they have. Right. And like in that little like area, I don't know. It's like that little slave town that Ray lived at. Outpost. Yeah. It's Scavenging like, outpost. Yeah. Nema outpost whatever yes but anyways yeah there's so much going into star wars land and it's so cohesive with the entire 
project of Star Wars itself and, you know, Lucasfilm and Disney and all that. No, it looks beautiful, man. Just some of the concept art. I couldn't be more excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just like the... um, Some of the the concept art, they talked about it in the panel as well. And uh, one part is a, a pod racer engine that's hanging from the ceiling that's heating up meat on top of a big uh, grill <laughs> so it's like they're they're using what they have left over to like you know regular to do regular things so we're gonna see that in the park we're gonna be eating things from those areas where it's like they're just like grilling grilling stuff out there yeah so i mean it's probably gonna be for show and then they're gonna pull out the actual thing from the back kitchen or whatever but if they did have it in there just like that that would be really cool. Like if it was like a little like kind of like in Mexico, how they have like the little taco yeah. people just on the side of the road. I wonder how much they'd pay. They'd pay just to dress up like an alien and grill stuff. Right. Cause think about that. Cause they're not only like performers, they're also doing work there and all of the cast members. Cause they, at Disneyland, all the people who work there, they call them cast members because you're like, when you're working at Disneyland, you're always on stage because like, that's where how they built Disneyland to begin with. Was it's supposed to be a living movie, you know? Gotcha. But so they're called cast members. So all the cast members in Star Wars land are going to be themed. They're going to be characters. They're going to have, they're going to be different. Uh, I mean, there's going to be humans, but there's going to be, I mean, we saw Ithorian, we saw um, Hondo. I forgot what he is, but. You know, we're probably going to see different things. We're going to see Zabrax. We're going to see um, Trandoshans. There's definitely some of those. And we're going to see, uh, what else? Some Twi'leks, definitely. I've seen Twi'leks in the concept art. Oh, yeah. So we're going to see those. And I'm really curious of how they're going to do the actual costuming for it. But and if they're gonna be like dancing in a cantina, or just pool just noodles. Like... They'll just <laughs> super glue pool pool noodles well, to what... a bald cap. <laughs> what people do at uh, at celebration and at different things when they're cosplaying as, um, especially like Hera or Ahsoka, like <laughs> yeah. it's pretty crazy. Some of them are like pretty, pretty uh, accurate. But I couldn't imagine working in that all day. Oh, I know that'd be goofy. Yeah, I don't think they'll have dancers. I don't think they will. Um, but they're going to have some sort of. Do you know how many moms would inter- complain about that? Yeah, but I mean, they're going to have a cantina band. They'll have a Bith band. A Bith band, exactly. That would be dope. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, I I With really hope they do that. With as the conductor, <laughs> <laughs> they'll just like put in like a little thing, like a little insignia that some people will see, like. Oh, it's tenebrous he is alive again so i mean that brings on we'll talk about the star wars land panel which had scott trowbridge pablo hidalgo wendy anderson Doug, doug chang asa kalama it's right here asa kalama that's his last name and uh chris Beatty, and they all work either for um lucasfilm or imagineering so we got interactive droids so they're going to be walking around. You can talk to them. They have character. They're going to tell you cool things. And they might be giving you missions. Because you know what? No way. You are going to be able to go to uh, like a first order recruiter or a, or a bounty hunter or a you know, resistance recruiter or a smuggler or a droid or something. And they're going to give you a task. And then that task, you're... You complete that task, and then you get a certain reputation for that faction. And how that is, it's going to follow you all day. What? So it's like they're going to know by, like, your ticket. I don't know if you have to, like, scan it or something like that or just through the app on your phone or some type of, like, the RFID tags or bracelets or whatever. Um, so you're going to have a reputation based on how you interact with characters and droids 
and even on the attractions like yeah on... i was just gonna say i wonder if the attractions will be able to read that and yep for like personalized experiences yeah and that leads into also the uh the millennium falcon simulator ride you're going to be able to uh, choose destinations based on group activity and i believe it's going to be like six people in the vehicle they haven't released that but the way they kind of uh confirm like they the way they talked about it is they're going to be actually smaller vehicles so it's probably going to feel like the millennium falcon cockpit so that will be really cool um but you are going to be able to go different ways, take more challenging areas, and you can get battle damage. <laughs> so depending on what you choose or where you go or how you fly, I guess, I don't know if it's going to be an actual flying experience or if you just make choices and it's like you chose to go down like this uh, this canyon. Oh, it's too small. Like you have to go through and like, you know, you, your radio thing is off, like your oh, man. your panel comes off, and then now you have no signal. You can't hear from anyone, and then like you go, you slow down, and then once you get to the end, they're all pissed off at you because you didn't do well. Then that goes on your reputation. That is cool. Yeah. So these are all things that they they actually like. They didn't confirm every. They didn't confirm anything really. They never do in these situations because they're like. This is what we're working on. These are the concepts because this is, you know, years away. Right. But they've been planning this for years and years, even before they got Lucasfilm at all, before they acquired it. But um, so, yeah, we have uh, uh, reputation and faction loyalty. And uh, new characters, droids. In that uh, battle escape ride or Project Alcatraz or codename Alcatraz, whatever uh, Imagineering is calling that, we saw the two ATST or ATATs in the building being constructed, and those aren't the only ones. Woo! They said those are some of them. Oh wow! Some of them. So they might be around in different areas or also in that ride again where they're actually articulated because those ones look like they are parked. Yeah. Um, Do we know if those are going to be to scale? I think they're a I little bit. I hope they are. I think they're a little bit smaller than scale, but it's enough to where, because I think that if they're too big. Yeah, at are huge. They're huge and you don't get the same like... Um, the same vantage point like the same thing with when they're making uh the indiana jones ride um george lucas said something about the the snakes because they had this design for where they had all these like really small snakes everywhere and they're like oh you can't see it and he wanted it to look like the scene where the snake actually is like jumping at the camera but you can't do that with little snakes when you're on a ride so right. that's why they put in the huge snake he was like, well, that's not realistic. There wouldn't be a big snake. But it's like, no, you have to see that. It has to be big for it to look like how it did in the movie. So it's another type of thing like that where they have to make it believable, but it can't be full scale, both for like the building like size and also just your vantage point. It's going to be hard to see if it's completely like full size. Yeah, you know, that's true. Because imagine, like, on Hoth, Luke right next to it. I don't know. Yeah. But they are huge. The first order ATATs could be smaller, and then they can have the bigger gorilla walkers, the Fohas. Fohas. So, yeah, the first order could have, like, smaller ATATs. ATAST? <laughs> A T A S T. <laughs> they did A T A C T, so. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Okay, and then we have. Oh, and also, they called that the most ambitious project in the his history of Walt Disney. The Battle Escape? Yes. So in the video, they said that with just 
Star Wars Land in general, but in the panel they said this ride in particular is the most ambitious project that Disney Imagineering has ever taken upon them. Like, and that's like Haunted Mansion, Indiana Jones. You have just crazy stuff. You have things in Shanghai now that are insanity. And this is the most ambitious project. And it's going to be the most, like, like technologically advanced whole, like, experience. Crazy. Yeah. And um, it's also very highly influenced by the original concept art by Ralph McQuarrie. And they, um, one of them actually said in the panel, if it doesn't look like Ralph McQuarrie, then it's not Star Wars. It's, it's true. So even like, so a lot of the backgrounds and the areas and the new characters are based on Ralph McQuarrie's concept art. So that's going to be really cool to see what they pull out of that. And some uh, some reimagined Macquarie concepts, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be really neat. Um, and then there's also a little uh, thing that a little I don't know hints at that the Battle Escape ride is going to be interactive as well. It's gonna be drivable, and you might have blasters. Ooh. Yeah, you might have blasters and that might also do with your reputation and maybe in this attraction you can switch teams or decide teams and so you could be like one one vehicles on the resistance and the other ones on the first order and you're like basically going against the other one so there's like two two different attractions where you're fighting against the resistance and the other one is fighting against the first order that would be awesome that would be sick and i would love to see that and that would make sense because this is what people have said that the closest thing this would be the closest thing to living a video game please give it to me so i am super excited about this also they put out a little easter egg or not easter egg but a little snippet of information it was very cryptic but they have some crazy new lightsaber technology that they're going to be using in the park in Star Wars Land. And they said it looks real. And we've seen that uh, it's probably using that patent that I've seen before. Um, I will link that and I'll show it on the screen as we're talking about it. But um, yeah, new lightsabers that are either going to be like toys or part of a ride or maybe um, part of a performance or all of the above or all of the above please Speaking, make it a toy so i can pay four hundred dollars at disneyland and take one home but if it looks real oh, come on dude my god can you imagine how much money and merch we're gonna have to throw down at star wars oh, land? I i'm like you have to dreading it but also not dreading it and <laughs> extremely looking forward to it yeah I, and i want to try like all of the food all of the beverages everything's in in story there's gonna they've like said it multiple times that there is going to be blue milk yes so we know for a fact there's going to be blue milk i think that's the one thing that we know for a very like for a fact that's gonna be on the menu is that there's blue milk on the menu Get me a nice tall glass of some blue milk. And also, um, instead of like sitting down and watching shows, that's who uh, Wendy Anderson. She takes, uh, she's in charge of the live entertainment um, of uh, Disney Imagineering. And it's not going to be sit down and watch a stage. It's going to be someone runs past you, and then stormtroopers run after them. And that person just climbs up a building or something and then they're like trying to shoot at them or go up there and like there'd be like two like like a bounty hunter and a smuggler fighting or something like that like bar fights just stuff like that throughout the whole thing so that might be also where they use the lightsaber technology yes please which would be crazy because imagine just like a random like you're walking around at nighttime, 
and like say just a crazy like lightsaber battle starts up behind you you like look back and they're just like right there and it could be like new characters that are like fighting against each other and a new everything we can find out what what is after the jedi and if anyone from maybe luke's uh luke's academy academy yeah if they showed up in star wars land so we now we have to see because that's going to be an entire story in itself so this is like a whole other movie like series itself is going to be you pl- taking place in the story yourself within the environment but at disneyland and at disney's hollywood studios in florida sounds like the ultimate larping experience yeah (laughs) except that they won't let you dress up (laughs) but um, i'm sure you could figure something out just wear a leather jacket if you want to be a smuggler (laughs) i don't know if they can stop you from wearing a robe if you like try to say it's a religious thing yeah if you just lie (laughs) yeah if you just lie about it go with the jedi way and lie well that's the obi-wan way from a certain point of view yeah exactly okay so now one of the biggest things that has a lot of information was the star wars rebels panel and we got some information and we got a new trailer for season four so I think what we're going to do is play and watch the season four trailer. And um, if you're listening, you're going to listen to it. And uh, That's how it works. That is how it works. Use your ears. And I'll, I'll, link, uh, I'll link the video so you can see it and watch it. I'm not going to be mean to you just because you're listening to a podcast. It was a simple story about a boy who was lost and a girl who was broken. They fought alongside a survivor, a war veteran, and a fallen knight. I led them into battle against an evil so terrible it tried to black out the stars. We fought for each other. We fought for those who could not. But we never imagined it would end like this. This is a time of difficult choices. sometimes impossible ones. As long as we're together, we've got a chance. At least we'll go down fighting. All paths are coming together now. It's time to get to work. We are the balance, Ezra. We were meant to be Jedi so we could be here now. When Lothal needs us most, May the Force be with you. Fall 2017. It's going to be here quick. Yeah, and there is a lot in that trailer that we could break down, but I'm thinking that we should do that in a separate episode as well. Yeah. Because that one is huge. We see, like, them, like, riding this huge wolf thing, like a force wolf. Yeah. Uh, and what a is... force wolf. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like, what is... I mean, I like wolves. I love wolves. I-, I love wolves. I have a blanket with a wolf on it, and I enjoy it. I and... love giant wolves, too. But... Force wolf? 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna deep dive into that force wolf because there's something else going on there. Yeah. Something if you pause the trailer at a certain point you can see some etchings in the in the background that may mean the force wolf isn't just a force wolf. Because there is someone who uh might just be able to transform into different animal animals? Aminals? Aminals. Transform into aminals. <sighs> Animorph. Ahsoka, yep. Animorph. Yep. Um, that leads, I'll just go straight to Ahsoka. Yep. So the whole Star Wars celebration. Um, excuse me. The whole Star Wars celebration. Dave Filoni was wearing this shirt. Ahsoka lives with a question mark. <laughs> Dave Filoni is such a bastard. I love him so much and he during the panel there's a point where they uh they watch the trailer and when it comes back it's an exclamation point not a question mark oh his shirt his shirt changed from a question mark to an exclamation point this guy so and also they did like tease like we're we're positive we're positive that Ahsoka is coming back in one shape, form in one form or a certain maybe different forms maybe she can be a forced turtle <laughs> <laughs> but can she like just turn into different species forced turtle can be like a, a forced gungan <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to just be like earth animals? Forest, forest owl? I do like the wolf. Let's stick with the wolf for now. Yeah, I kind of like the wolf. It's not going to be like, uh, what's it called? Uh, did you ever watch uh, Teen Titans? Uh, No. It's horrible. Or Teen Titans was okay, but Teen Titans Go is horrible. But a lot of the times, I leave my TV on Cartoon Network at night, and then when I wake up, it's like always like Teen Titans. And so there's like Beast Boy. I do remember Beast Boy. Yeah, and he just like turns into like whatever animal he wants at like any time. Is Ahsoka going to be able to just like turn into animals, or if it's going to be like she has to inhabit a living being? Or does she create this thing from the force? We don't even know if the if Ahsoka really is that wolf, but we're pretty sure. Yeah, I think we need to be careful not to get too. Uh, I don't know what's the word like Lord of the Rings with it like or mystical. Yeah, I mean, well, Star Wars is mystical, but. Mm -hmm. Star I mean, Wars is like fantasy, like fantastical, whereas like, like, yeah, like Lord of the Rings is more like, it's kind of like magic. It's more, it's just weird. It's weirder in a different way. Yeah, I, I feel like just weird people powers. turning into wolves mm -hmm. is kind of not Star Wars-y. Yeah. Because Star Wars is like, within its... I mean, of course, you know, you have people shooting lightning out of their fingers and all kinds of crazy stuff. But within its yeah. its universe, like, everything's believable. And I f just feel like somebody transforming into a wolf kind of doesn't but, fit in there. But I think that she's dead. I think it's her spirit is inhabiting this wolf. I think that it's kind of like a force ghost. Oh, her force ghost. Okay. Yeah. So I think it might be... Um, she lady busted a wolf. I think it might be a gray Jedi or like middle ground, maybe Bendu type of learning. Maybe that's what the extra learning is about. Like that so much more. That's what Luke is going to talk about is like there's so much more like afterwards like when you die you can't you don't just become a force ghost you can train in a different way where you can inhabit different 
animals or create your own thing because where did the bendu come from the bendu right. the animal itself like or is he an animal he turns into a force storm maybe he was a jedi himself before and like we don't know there's a lot to unpack here mm-hmm. and i think yeah, if ahsoka can do it that opens up the door for you know all kinds of things maybe we'll see yoda come back and he'll fly around as a little convery or we're pretty sure we're actually going to see yoda in puppet form and it's probably going to be a force ghost and um so i'm thinking we're going to see yoda as a force ghost and you have the the voice in there we're going to see i think we're going to see some force ghosts in this one yeah yeah and um I think we're going to see Liam Neeson back in uh, Last Jedi. Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, anything is possible. I, You are right that it's kind of ridiculous, but they might be able to explain it away in that it's a spirit inhabiting it rather than some person being able to just change into a animal at will. Yeah, that would make a little more sense. It would satisfy fans a little bit better than <laughs> than hey i'm just gonna turn into an animal when i need to i'll i'll leave it at this it works for me in rebels i don't think it would work for me in film yeah yeah and it kind of worked in um i mean not exactly where like a it's not exactly where like uh it's like inhabiting a I guess the the owls. What are they called? The converies. Converies. Yeah, the converies. They're they're like the force protectors, and I guess that's another thing that was revealed that um, there are going to be other small beings, little bird type things that look kind of like puffins, but they have sharp teeth. <laughs> oh, Ryan, what do you got in store for us, buddy? This is a real weird one, and I really hope that they're animatronic. I don't want to see just CG. I mean, it's going to be hard for them to like walk around, but there's got to be some like camera angle ways that they can do mostly puppetry or animatronic work. I would love to see that, but they've been so amazing with their, you know, with their imagery, with their CGI. Like I'm sure that they can make a weird animal look completely realistic even if they have to do the whole thing in cgi yeah you know? except for the wrath tars that was a different thing though because it was <laughs> like they tried to do different things with the lighting because the um yeah the the cgi looked good or the cgi looked bad the uh the puppet looked good with the animatronic with the eye all the close-up shots for that but it's like when it slithers through the hallway pretty much and it's like I mean, I think it's also like the um, probably hard to get right in that dark hallway. Exactly, and and with that. the lighting, and then like the um, it's supposed to look a little slimy, and then just the way that tentacles move themselves, it's kind of hard to replicate. So I could understand that, but little puffins just like walking around, like waddling around. They I think could probably make those easier. look good. Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, but rebels, rebels panel. Okay, uh, we need to cut to the chase here. I see in our notes uh, you have Boba Fett question mark. So, yeah. Yeah, let's get to that. That's I, why I, I want that. First thing I was going to say. Okay, good. Season four is the last one. So, we are going to see some characters making a little <laughs> debut. And this was um, kind of um, teased by um, by uh, Tia Tia Sikar, sir. How do you say her last name? Sirkar. Spell it. Sirkar. S I R C A R. Sirkar. Yeah. Sirkar. Tia Sirkar. Um. Anyways, she's the voice for Sabine. Sabine okay. Ren. Anyways, so. She said that we're going to be meeting both some new Mandalorians and some very some some old Mandalorians that we are very fond of that we've seen before. And um 
I'll like take out that that um clip and show it in the YouTube video because we don't have time to find that exact little part. But it is really exciting that that means I think that the Fets are coming back. Please, Disney, give us Boba Fett. Yeah. 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 Do do what do like, the character justice. Like yeah. do do what everybody wants to happen, you know? And I'm I'm sure like stuff like that, like characters aren't actually decided by Disney themselves. It would be more um like for films that Disney really has a huge hand in. But as far as that, if you, as long as it's goes by Pablo Hidalgo and Kathleen Kennedy. Well everybody I, you okay. Know, like there will be the random people that are like, "Oh, I hate Boba Fett. He doesn't do anything." And but, then they're fired. <laughs> yeah, but fire them. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I know. What most you mean. like hardcore Star Wars fans that read the comics like love Boba Fett and mm-hmm. they want more Boba Fett. So they have to have. He has a huge like fan base. Mm-hmm. Every we saw every, him in Clone Wars. Yeah, every time he has like a figure come out. It's impossible to find. It's one mm-hmm. of the, you know, on eBay, it's one of the most marked up ones. Um, so they know that he has a huge fan contingent. We also had a little interview with the the three Fets at Celebration, which was interesting. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I will play that right now. I'll put it in post. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> we don't have time and I don't have the actual thing. And we also got some more information. Um, I there was like these little kind of slips that we picked up because Dave Filoni was kind of like, "I trust you guys. Go ahead and answer the questions." But there's a few little slips, like uh, Taylor Gray. He voices Ezra, and he was saying that he realizes that he has to go back to help his people and then he was like i can see uh i can see dave shooting daggers at me right now so (laughs) like his eye he was just like staring at him like don't say anything so ezra's returning to lothal yeah and we also got confirmed of course um the new rebel base um on Yavin 4 and it is going to be to the exact dark and drab look they're not going to change it they're going to match the exact look that it was originally that's in the great original trilogy it's a strong choice yeah so it's not going to be this this season not just story-wise but also visually it's going to be more dark more drab um in you know color and in where they're at you know their environment itself um it's also going to be a more cohesive story so it's going to be more serialized where um you know each one builds upon the other uh especially from the beginning of rebels each one was its own it was like a standalone adventure that you can pick up and be like oh cool you don't have to watch the next few you can watch another one yeah, we don't have time for that anymore. Yeah, here. we need we need the story. This story has to has to come to a head. Yeah, I, and I love that they took the the way of South Park, and actually made a they're making a cohesive season. Is it from a story uh, from a show that was very episodic as far as like, like open and close story, right? Especially droid things, and there's gonna be less fillers because there's nothing to fill this is all going to be like information and it's going to be all story but it's going to be beautiful and there's only 15 episodes for the last season wow but they're probably going to be longer episodes and i'm sure the season finale is going to be an hour long or 44 minutes or whatever Um, was there a comment on if it ties into the end of rogue one i'm sure they wouldn't give that away but they did oh they did 
and is not tying in with Rogue One at all. But I kind of like that because that makes it so that Dave Filoni can end it in however he wants, like what makes sense to those characters rather than what makes sense to the rebellion itself. Right. Because we see that in Rogue One, you know, and we get that little glimpse of um, Hera's still there, and Chopper's still there. But we also got a little bit more information on Hera that um, there's a new like web animated web series about the... Um, like all of the the women of Star Wars, all of the heroines, and um, I guess Hera is around for Return of the Jedi. Oh wow! So she is alive through this whole, through the original trilogy. She is a part of that uh, rebellion armada or whatever. We don't see her obviously. Because she wasn't created back then, but <laughs> yeah. but they you know they put her in the right canon. Con. Yeah, exactly. But I mean that's going to be everything. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, they're going to add in another just the the ghost. Yeah, but I mean I'm sure they're going to like they're going to say that she got on a different ship or something like that. Right. Decided. Yeah. Because that's years later if you think about it. Like it doesn't. Yeah, it'll be fine. I mean, Return of the Jedi. Whatever. That's just going to be kind of cool. And lastly, about Rebels, we get Warwick Davis himself as a voice actor in Rebels. Awesome. And because I guess he'd been begging, uh, not begging him, but bugging Dave Filoni about having a voice in Clone Wars. And then so Dave Filoni was like, okay, I'm just waiting for something good for you. And then Clone Wars ended, and then he like just kind of forgot about it. And then uh, at uh, last year at Star Wars Celebration London, uh, at the Rebels panel, Warwick Davis was uh, was uh, what do you call it? Hitting up Dave. Yeah, but what do you call it when they're the the person that's leading the um, the panel? Um, question asker. Yeah, question asker, that one. <laughs> Warwick Davis was the question asker at the Rebels panel. Yeah. The host? It's something else. It's like a, not a moderator, but something like that. Whatever. He was doing the interview portion <laughs> of this. So he was asking them questions. And one of his things, one of his questions was about uh, new voice actors, new characters, and uh, he kind of alluded to him wanting a, a a spot and put him on the spot in front of everyone at Star Wars Celebration in London. So that was pretty great. <laughs> I'll post a clip of that too because it's pretty funny. But um, his character is sick. He is Thrawn's personal assassin and bodyguard. And this comes straight from Heir to the Empire itself. The, one of the original Thrawn trilogy books by Timothy Zahn. Rook is his name. And he's a Nogri, right? I believe so. Uh, he is very... Uh, interesting looking yeah no agree they look a little bit like predator the predator yeah but not like as uh gnarly <laughs> yeah not as gnarly but we'll post a picture up here too if you're watching the uh the youtubes um but i'm really excited for that because it's thrawn's personal assassin and we saw him in the trailer We'll go over that when we go over the trailer and kind of unpack that. Um, yes, I already want an action figure. Yeah, seriously. It's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And he's a very good voice actor. He can pull out a bunch of stuff. One of his, uh, he tried out, the way he tried out was he did the um, the voice of Maul. And he did it, like, perfect. 
why come to this place? It's just, it was amazing. So I'll post that. Now he can make his, he can do a, a something guttural, like I picture that Nogri will have. Really. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be really cool. So now we have Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yes. This is exciting that a lot of people are stoked on this. What was missing from the first one? Single player. Single player, offline, and co-op. And I am going to play the trailer for Star Wars Battlefront 2. So let's watch it. I've waited 30 years for this. I still remember my last orders. The real war began. The rebellion cannot be allowed to persist. We weren't expecting special forces. That's the point, Sergeant. Impossible. Commander. We avenge our emperor. Resistance. Rebellion. You will burn these ideas away. Hope cannot save them. Yes. Yeah. So it looks like they really listened to uh, feedback and they're going to give us what we actually wanted. <laughs> yeah. And just the single pay player battles like the or multiplayer battles, just one on one. Mm hmm. My God. It was confirmed that the story is going to be canon. Yeah. It is going to be part of the story and it's going to. I think that everything that Lucasfilm is doing now is building a story within every medium rather than reliving parts of the story, you know? So, I mean, that was the same thing that they talked about with the Star Wars expansion. Now we have that with video games where it's, I mean, you can replay as those old, old things from all of the years of Star Wars. You can play different, different characters in multiplayer, but the main campaign is very interesting. And Stefan, why is it very interesting? It's very interesting because it looks like we are going to be able to play through um, Operation Cinder, which is Palpatine's contingency plan. For if the Empire was ever defeated. But Stefan, what side are we going to be playing on? Well, Operation Cinder, that's all the Empire, baby. Yup. And so, uh, you know what else is cool about the campaign? What else is cool? It's going to be co-op. I am very excited for that. 
that makes me very happy. Yeah. No, we haven't had a good co-op game in forever. Make co-op great again, Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make those hats. <laughs> yeah. Make co-op great again. Yes. <laughs> yes. That'll work. <laughs> um, but no, this is going to be great. This is going to be so cool. And um, hopefully we get to see how the Empire transitions into the First Order. Yeah. How about that? That would be awesome, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, I'm curious of the span of time, you know, how the um, the campaign itself, is it going to just be that, you know, that little operation, that whole, like, line of events that kind of happen directly after, or is it going to reach out a little bit more, like, years later? Because there might be time jumps in the game itself, in the campaign. Yeah. Another little cool... Um, tidbit is uh, the special forces unit on Endor you hear in Jedi Palpatine says something like a squadron of my best troopers you know await await your friends on um, Endor mm -hmm. so maybe that special squad that you see kind of destroying all the rebels there was the one he was talking about which mm. I, I think it might be that makes sense because the ones at the the shield base they weren't very special well i mean that would and it would be kind of the same probably the same type of thing that he did with uh clones where they're almost uh you know where they just receive the message after he dies or whatever maybe it's just like once he dies these the special forces receive this message these this message and they're like, okay, ship out right away. Yeah. You know? And it also makes me think of the the death troopers. If they're, you know, attached to that uh that line. You know, that like the special I mean they're both like special forces, like green beret style thing. So I'm wondering if it's just an evolution of that or if it's a separate entity itself. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. There's, it's. I'm really, really looking forward to the single player campaign. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to, um, getting to play across all eras. Yeah, which is probably Especially the in best multiplayer. News. Yeah, um, Clone Wars, and uh, sequel trilogy too is gonna be in there. Yeah, and that's, that's gonna be amazing. That's gonna be amazing. Yeah. I wish they had rebels, but whatever. It'd be just kind of difficult to build those three D models without them looking how they look. That'd be cool if they had an expansion like just rebels. Some of the rebels' heroes, though. That'd be cool. Um, that would be really cool. I think that's doable. Mm -hmm. Throw Sabine in there, and I think they could do Sabine pretty easily if you kind of just ported that to a different female form. Yeah. I mean, because they're not super close up anyways. I mean, but the graphics look so amazing that it's like, that's them. So I guess it would be kind of difficult because you would have to make Sabine look like a person and then translate into the 3D rather than just putting in a character that already exists in real life, you know? Yeah. That they can take pictures of and yeah scan. Yeah, I mean it takes some work. It's doable. It's they can doable. put anything it's in doable. a video game. Yeah, so. um, I would love just for that a different to happen. art style. But or yeah. just Mandalorians in general, that'd be cool. Like pre -viz pre Vizsla and stuff like yes. that. Like, yeah, all that stuff. That'd be pretty awesome. That'd be amazing. No, this looks so much better already. Yeah, and I mean the first Battlefront was beautiful, but it wasn't. Um, it just wasn't that immersive. And you couldn't play it offline. Yeah, you couldn't play it offline. Yeah, there's like... And Out, the combat felt kind of weird to me, too. It felt... I mean, I have it, but mm -hmm. I bought it, and I, I still play it like, here and there. But I don't know if this makes sense, but the combat, the combat feels like spongy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's not raw. And it's not controlled. It's kind of just like, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the, um, 
like the like the first Call of Duty games, which were really good, but you feel you don't feel as attached to the character. You know what I mean? Yeah. As some of the newer ones where it it might just be like the angle of the wep like where how you hold the weapons or something. You know, it's just one little thing that's off that makes it feel like, oh, okay, I'm playing a video game. That's it like that's the difference is that if I'm playing I wanna get lost in it rather than like con- or constantly being like, okay, this is a video game. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, the combat felt weird and I mean, I still play Counter Strike Source, and it's uh, <laughs> crappy. So I mean, <laughs> I don't care about it like that way about the graphics, but just the controls and kind of like how you know what I mean. It's spongy. Like yeah, I'm not a game designer. I I can't tell you exactly. I I mean, I'm sure some people weren't that into the combat either. Yeah, and it, it didn't feel. I mean, it, it's we wanted something new, but it didn't bring back the same feelings is like battlefront 2 the original one i think it's also the um how you uh how you get damage yeah it's it's a different it's kind of a different system um and it felt more um more like a fight in the original one whereas um in the you know the last one the remake of battlefront um it was like it's like one hit and you're dead you know what i mean yeah like sometimes it's just kind of overpowered it sometimes it makes sense in that in the story why like darth maul would be able to take you out like super easy if he caught you off guard (laughs) yeah and it like and star wars is that type of thing we've talked about it's samurai it's quick action type stuff but when it's in a video game you can't have that standoff you can't just be like, okay, I want to look at that, look at this, unless it's like uh, Red Dead Redemption or Red Dead Revolver, where it like kind of slows down and you can like, like say like shoot this part, this part, this part, and then yeah. it happens. That would be interesting if there was like a dueling Star Wars game like that. <laughs> but in this situation, it's like using a lightsaber is kind of, I don't know, it's not counterintuitive, but it's like, it's fun. But it's not how the game was built, right? Yeah. The 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 last one. But mm. I feel like this next one is gonna be so immersive, like just the story and then like the the um the maps, and like I kind of just stopped on uh, Battlefront when I just realized that it was dumb, and I haven't played any of like the DLC. Yeah. So I don't even know what's what they have now, but I'm I, just looking. I'm looking forward to you know all the sequel trilogy maps like i don't get me wrong i love hoth and i love you know tatooine but we've played on those on so many different platforms so many different times Mm -hmm. that i'm just i'm ready to see you know taco donna yeah and um, that would be cool uh star killer base that's definitely gonna happen too yeah and also uh scarif yeah, scary. It's most likely going to be in there. So imagine that. That's going to be a cool multiplayer multiplayer map. Yes. And I I wonder how big they're going to make it. Cuz I mean they like the last one they kind of had smaller maps. Um but then there's like big interior areas. Mhm. I'm wondering if this one's going to be more my more like battlefield where it's just a huge area to play. I would love if they just did that. If it was like a huge, like, like full on war, like game type. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like like Battlefield, like how <laughs> Battlefield is. But uh, so it would be cool to play like the entire base at Scarif, like the entire like comm tower, like everything. Being able to go to different. Uh, like the different um, landing pads, what are they called? Yeah, just the little landing pads. And yeah, be, you have to like take over different landing pa- pads or something like that. That would be cool. So yeah, like something like that where it's more... Like a hold the zone kind of thing? Mm-hmm, exactly. That would be sweet. Yeah. So imagine that being like full scale Scarif, like that one, like that facility. Mm. So do that, EA. 
it's ea right yeah EA. ea and dice yeah yeah and i don't think we got anything for the other rumored video game coming out so yeah i didn't hear anything about that might see something at d23 we'll see it might be too early and i mean as you can see we received or not us specifically but star wars fans in general received so much information from celebration that they do need to break it up because we've been talking about it for a while and these are just like scratching the surface yeah, another brief thing of note is uh, Hasbro announced that they are bringing back the 3.75 scale, um, the vintage collection. Yes, for um, the 40th anniversary. Yeah, well, these aren't the 40th anniversary figures. They're actually they're bringing out a whole, like a whole line. Like mm -hmm. you know, they have the Black Series. Yeah. Um, the 40th anniversary figures are like black series but oh yeah no the, they're bringing the back specific 40th anniversary ones, yeah but. they're bringing back um a 375 scale called the vintage collection and this was i think unanimously the best 375 run of star wars toys of all time so everybody's very excited about that and they're gonna have more than five points of articulation because the, th mm -hmm. the three seven fives you have right now, I think their head swivels and then their arms, it's like yeah, it's like robot arms. They just move up and down. They don't <laughs> they don't bend at the elbows or like have any articulation in the wrist or anything. Um, so they're yeah they're super articulated, and they were the series was famous for like its quality paint jobs, and um like a really good just roster like overall roster of figures mm -hmm. that they made so if you're a figure collector your wallet's gonna hurt pretty soon <laughs> and i'm sure that they're gonna start doing uh more vehicles within the next uh within the next year or so yeah um they're what else do we see uh for actually black series they're doing they're making a mara jade which was kind of the dumb fan vote from like a year ago. Mm. Um, I think people just did that to spite um, Disney because it was right after they announced um, like the new canon pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was stupid. She jumped like 20 percentage points in the last day. It was just people trolling. Um, so they're doing a Mara Jade. They're doing a Luke with the the land speeder on Tatooine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that one. And they're doing a um I don't I don't remember his name, but the clone trooper on Kashik that gets his head chopped off by Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Um and I forget what else what other black series figures they announced. Let me look real quick. Um but while Stefan is looking, yeah. speaking of Black Series figures, we mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again because it's a really good opportunity for you, actually, because a dollar really isn't that much, and you have a very high chance of winning at this point right now. So all you need to do is uh, donate a dollar. It'll get you an entry. Um, it'll help us get better equipment. We're trying to get... Uh, legitimate video camera and uh better lighting and stuff like that and whole new set it's going to be really cool so uh any donation helps but if you want to have a chance to win the um black series atst you can uh, go on our website star wars after hours um then scroll down to the picture of the atst figure and uh Click it, it'll take you to our Indiegogo site and just uh, put down your donation and your name so that we can uh, do a little random number generator once the, uh, once the giveaway is over. Yeah, so I forgot to mention like the coolest ones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tarkin with a... Oh. Um, an interrogation droid 
What? Yeah, dude. I didn't know about that one. Yeah, and it looks awesome. I'm definitely going to pick that one up. Uh, we're getting a Thrawn. And the, the Thrawn is uh, like a deluxe figure, and it comes with his throne room with some pieces of art that oh you see in God. Rebels. Yeah, check this out. Have you seen it? That's so, I haven't seen this one. That's so sick. So sick. And then they're making, uh, to tie in with the new Battlefront, they're making the um, Special Forces figure. It kind of looks like a TIE fighter. I wish they would have done something different. I don't really like mm-hmm. the way the Special Forces look. Yeah, I mean it, that's it that's the like only that. that's the only gripe I have. It's just like a mm-hmm. it looks like a Tie Fighter pilot. That's yeah. what they look like with just red. But I'm wondering if they they're gonna have like reasoning behind like the breathing thing is so they can breathe in different areas. Maybe it's places where there's gassing or something. Because, um, you know we're gonna have Saw Gerrera coming back in Rebels, and they kind of have to cover what happened to him you know and what's up with his voice and all that stuff and really get into that um so it's weird that they're kind of it's like chemical warfare and then like you got some crazy stuff that they're kind of building into um but yeah what else what else do they have um those were the those were the big no those are the big ones the yeah big, those were the big figures um, those were the black series ones that I'm really excited about. Yeah. And yeah, um, I saw the, um, the Luke one. Um, I think I saw it on a forum. It was either a forum or a Facebook group. I think it was on a black series Facebook group. Yeah. So, so that one's really cool. I'll mm-hmm. probably, there's not really a dud in any of those. I'll probably pick up all of them. I'll probably, I know. If that's a case, I'll, I'll probably pick up the whole case. <laughs> um, cause those are good. And then, yeah, Vintage Collection. I think it said uh, Fall 2018. Oh, okay. Which is a while off, but... um, Yeah. Oh, Spring 2018, so even further. No. Spring... Oh, yeah. Not (laughs) Fall 18, Spring 18. Yeah. So, just basically a year from now. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much a year from now. Um, but I think that's all we're going to cover for today as far as, uh, celebration news. And, uh, one cool thing that I, uh, that I liked was the little interview with Ian McDermott. And, um, of course he is Palpatine, the emperor, the chancellor, all of those things. And it was really funny, but also very uh, kind of uh, mind-blowing because he basically confirmed that Plagueis made Anakin. Which we all kind of but I mean figured, but... Yeah, but that's in old canon, the books, or whatever. But he's still saying that now... And I mean, it's not like he has the authority to call it, but it sounds pretty solid. Yeah, I think he was saying, you know, in his mind, yeah, as he interpreted it, that's what was happening. Yeah, but like as like a as a stage performer and actor, I mean, I'm sure that he knows how to literally read between the lines, right, and see what is really going on in that situation, but um. Yeah, I'll add a clip at the end so you can see a few of the things he said. Actually, one of the, they're talking about toys and um, one of the toys, the toy that he said it was was his favorite was the Pez dispenser version of him. (laughs) And I have that Pez dispenser. (laughs) It like showed it on the screen. I was like, oh, sick. I have that Pez dispenser. (laughs) You would have that Pez dispenser. I have that. I have Darth Vader, Yoda. Uh, I have, I have a Death Star Pez dispenser. Nice, nice. Pretty awesome. All right, buddy. Well, let's uh let's wrap this one up. So, guys, um, if you listen to the show, 
please give us a review on iTunes. That would help. And if you do, we will call in a member of the Star Wars Galaxy to read off your review. Yes. And I'm going to start posting... Um, we're going to start doing like a mailbag if we ever get any questions on Twitter. Yeah. I've been announcing them. Um, I've been posting... Uh, a couple hours before the show goes live. Um, if you guys respond to that, we can do a mailbag at the end. That would be really fun. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, we have people that follow us on different social media sites, and it's a little different because on Twitter, our name is too long. So it's at SW after hours. Um, everything else is at Star Wars after hours. So if there's a little confusion, Go to start or go to Twitter and it's SW after hours. And then you guys can follow that and see um, what's going on. We post up news. We also post up, you know, like Stefan was saying, the um, right when we're going to record. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode. Next week, uh, tune in for the deep dive with Dale Wentland into the Last Jedi trailer. Yeah, we're going to be pulling a lot of stuff out of there pulling it apart and putting it back together and trying to make a movie out of it even though like rogue one out of it will probably be in the movie <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a million questions that are just gonna have mundane answers but i know dale and i know his head is probably going in a million miles an hour yeah um, he definitely wants to talk about it so. so he's gonna be real fun to have in not in house but in spirit in house and on skype so stay tuned yep and then we're also going to be talking very soon about what's coming next for the animated series after rebels mm, yeah so also stay tuned for that that's going to be a great episode as well thanks guys bye bye just kidding lady busters <laughs> <laughs> So be it, Jedi. He's no good to me dead. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. You know what's going on?